Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Tesarik. I would not even call myself a kernel hacker and definitely not a memory management hacker. But there's something that I noticed while I was working on the software IOTLB code, and I'm very glad I can present it to you and ask for some feedback, if it's a good idea, bad idea, if there's an easier solution or whatever. Good, let's get started. Um, the thing is, uh, it seems the, the page allocator uh, does not really provide good service to device drivers. How do I move on? Um, no, no, no. He's this one. Good. Um, it seems that the, the zoned um, body allocator was built around this simple idea um, that we can somehow <clears throat> split the available RAM into uh, several zones, and then the CPU can access all the zones, and then some devices uh, are more limited, so they can only do 32-bit addresses, they will only access the DMA32 and DMA, and if you're really unlucky, you also have a legacy until 8237. I don't think it even is manufactured any longer. And then you're only um, limited to the DMA zone, and everybody is happy. Um, well, unfortunately, uh, that's not what happens in the real world. Um, what we really have is um, different address spaces. We have this um, physical address space, which is uh, what you get in the CPU, like uh, translated from virtual addresses by page tables. And then you have something that could be called a bus address space. And uh, there's a, or there can be uh, an offset applied by a host bridge. There can also be an IOMMU, but I'm not showing that here. And the device has its own limitations. Um, it can be even worse. Um, we can have multiple buses on that, dis on that system, and each has a different offset. So um, mm, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between the physical addresses and the bus addresses. Uh, now, you may ask, OK, but the kernel somehow works today. So um, yeah, I can tell you how that actually works. So this is a real code taken from the kernel, and there's this um, DMA covariant OK, and that's a function which just take, uh, takes a device, a physical address, and, and a size, and it checks whether that address can be used by that device. And if you look at it, it just first does the translation from a physical address to a bus address. Um, which may fail, so first it, 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 it verifies that the address is even, the, the, the given physical address is even um, possible in the bus address space, and then it checks whether it is within the, the device's limits. Oh, okay, um, which is good, but how do we actually allocate? So the thing is, Okay, I, don't, I hope that that is still readable. Uh, the comments uh, in bold are from me. So the thing is, um, if you need a buffer that is DMAable by a device, then you just first try to get it from a restricted pool. Um, if that fails, try to allocate from CMA. If that also um, fails, um, then just uh, like, okay, uh, fall back to the body allocator, and that's somehow sad, because you just try to use some GFP flags, you, tr you, you get the best uh, GFP flags um, based on the limitations of the device, and then you just call this um, uh, DMA covariant OK, and if it fails, you just try a different GFP flag and hope for the best, um, or fail. So. Okay, uh, next thing is I have only talked about the, the, the address limitations. There might be other constraints, like some devices uh, can't work with encrypted uh, memory. Uh, SEV always needs an unencrypted uh, memory region. SME needs it if the device is on the wrong side of the secure processor. And uh, this decrypting is a blocking operation, and it's an expensive operation. So we have something called a coherent pool, which just tries to keep around a sum.
some pages, um, just in case you need um, an unencrypted page in a context that cannot block. Okay. What can we, can we do better? Like this has been in the kernel for like, I don't know, at least um, decades, like, yeah, 20 years. <laughs> well, not everything, the encryption is, is younger, but can we do better? And I, I was thinking maybe I could talk, call my talk, can we kill DMA and DMA32 zones finally? But I found that that's a bit bold. Um, there are some good things about the, the memory zones and uh, some, I have tried to list some. Uh, the best thing about it is it provides some dedicated pools so you can be sure that, well, okay, not sure, but reasonably likely that you can allocate even if there's memory pressure and you're in an interrupt context. Um, the next thing is uh, if you get below the, the thresholds, the watermarks, uh, then it gets um, refilled automatically during reclaim. And um, yeah, um, that's about it. The bad things, uh, well, it is static. Um, the thing is, um, uh, the, the zones are initialized before we even have discovered those devices. Like um, if they're on a, on a bus that is enumerated, like PCI Express, then um, that happens much later than the zoning. And there can be only three, normal DMA32 and DMA. Uh, some architectures don't even have all three. And there can be different constraints if you have multiple buses. And we, we have seen systems where it's um, challenging to find a suitable uh, DMA zone limit. So my idea, um, and this is like a very rough idea, and I'm, I'm really hoping that I get some, some feedback and someone just jumps up and say, why don't you? Um, instead of using these static zones, I would just uh, create some allocation groups as needed. I'm not calling them zones because um, there are some differences, although you will recognize that some of the, some of the structures, like some of the features I'm describing here, uh, would be contained in a struct zone these days. Maybe we'll have to split the struct zone if we, if we decide this is a good idea after all. Um, so, right. Um, the thing is, uh, when a device is registered, uh, it is already known which limitations are um, in place, both the bus uh, translation and the limitations of the device itself. So we can um, group devices that have the same constraints, and if there is no group that matches the constraints, we'll just allocate a new one. Um, good. Now. Um, the, the difference is uh, this kind of zone or allocation group uh, needs to be populated somehow, which is different from populating the, the, the zone. And it's also not quite a reclaim. I, I mean, I call it initial reclaim in quotes, but it's not really a reclaim because there is no free list and there is no RCU list. There is nothing. It's really like um, we have to somehow take away some pages from the normal zone. Um, but once that, once that is done, uh, we can just treat it kind of like a zone. So when, uh, when the body allocator uh, finds out that, okay, we are below a watermark, it will automatically move from an RCU list into the free list, and it will be available with uh, some sort of allocation, probably not get pages, but it probably will need um, either the, the group pointer or the device pointer or something that will just tell which constraints are needed. Um, and yeah, if all goes really well, it could also automatically unencrypt those pages. So we could also get rid of these uh, coherent pools and instead just rely on, okay, we have these um, uh, emergency pools already built into the allocator. So that's just about it. Um, okay, I'll probably return here, and I, now do we have time for questions?
have a bad idea, like jump up and say, why don't you just simply? <laughs> And uh, so yeah, these uh, groups would be somehow associated with the device, right? But not like completely reserved. So when, when uh, no device needs them, would the normal allocations like be allowed to use them or only movable allocations or? Yes, so the idea, thank you. So yes, the idea is only the emergency pools would be reserved, but all other memory would be movable into the normal zone. The uh, low memory reserve logic is pretty difficult to understand. And uh, yeah, so would you then need to expand that to kind of, you'd have to expand that, I think. So that, that determines how much of an ordinary allocation can you use a lower zone. So I guess, have you thought about that? Or look, have you looked at that code? Oh, um, the, the idea is we will not have zones. We will, okay, I, we will because we will still have the normal zone and the movable zone, but uh, we, we will not just, uh, we, we will stop uh, dividing memory by addresses. Like, forget it, that's obsolete. That's pretty bold. <laughs> So in some sense, it sounds similar to CMA to me, which is kind of also, this is reserved, but movable allocations can use them and I can throw it away. But the aim is not to have large contiguous allocations, but allocations uh, restricted to, to addresses that you need. Yes, and also there is a difference. Uh, I don't really need a contiguous space. Like uh, most allocations are relatively small, like uh, order one, order two maximum, and uh, they can be sparsed. Like uh, they can be, uh, like the, the, exactly, CMA is continuous, but this does not have to be. How large are the ranges that the devices can use, like, uh, roughly. Uh, what do you mean ranges? Like, what are the constraints you do? Like, okay, in general, there is no clear translation, like I explained, but um, I mean, you will not see a device that, uh, that reasonably has less than 32 bits of address bits, sort of like. But I guess we wouldn't convert the whole applicable range to this CMA-like thing because that would place constraints on normal allocation. So we were to decide how much to... Okay, yeah, I get it. Uh, so the question was how much memory would be moved into such a an alloc device allocation group? That's a good question, and I, know, I don't have a good answer, because obviously it depends on um, how many devices share the group, and also it depends on the kind of device, because some devices really only make a small allocation and initialization and never again. Um, then you have video yeah, exactly, and then you have video decoders. I, I think we'd also want to make them movable. So if, if, if K Compact D comes around and says, I, I, I want that page, I mean, it, it's, it's free, right? So it's, it's very easy to allocate a new page and say, yeah, I, I, I really free the data after that one because there's no data in it. And I mean, for, um, for a blocking allocation, it's no problem to just get that memory back from the normal <laughs> zone. It's just really the only thing I can Imagine it really makes a difference are these emergency pools with GFP atomic. I, I wonder if we can enhance that further and integrate it with the. Um, I've, I've, forgotten, I've forgotten the name, but we, we, we have that. We have an individual per device driver cache that we can do for emergency allocations. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mempools. Mempools. That's right. So if we can integrate this with mempools. Theoretically, I... Uh, be, be, because right, right, right now, the core MM has no visibility into individual mempools. So uh, again, if kcompact D comes around and says, I would like that page, and it's in a mempool, it can't have it. So, but if this is part of, if this is integrated into the MM... You need the dev more device drivers to use mempools because now it's only kind of tens of them maybe using mempools. Yeah, I mean, I don't particularly enjoy the current mempool implementation, but if, if, if this can solve the same problem as mempools, and it kind of sounds from what you were saying like it might be able to. So if it's not just atomic all allocations that get to use the emergency pools, but other things, uh, this, this could be a real improvement for the kernel. I haven't looked into mempools, and uh, yeah, I know I'm, yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> like, you. Yeah.